Hey guys, today I'm going to be going over my first attempt at the alkaline electrolysis of sodium zincate, and I'm going to be demonstrating why you probably shouldn't try it at home. Uh, let's get into it, yeah. Uh, just a little note in case you can't tell by the title, this did not work, so just like brace yourself for that. Also, I totally forgot, before we get into this, I should probably go over a few things first, so yeah. This is zinc. Zinc is a group 12 uh, transition metal, and I say that with air quotes because for some reason Liber doesn't count it as a transition metal, and I'm not going to get into why. But yeah, what even is a transition metal? Blah, 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 blah. Uh, honestly, I don't know. Anyways, zinc is relatively reactive. Not like super reactive, like potassium or lithium or any of those, but it is reactive enough to where it'll make an oxide or hydroxide layer in water and when exposed to the atmosphere. In addition, zinc is pyrophoric. That'll potentially come into play later. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Okay, now that that absolute shit show's out of the way, let me show you an even bigger shit show of a lab. Uh, yeah, here we go. We'll start by measuring out some zinc oxide or zinc hydroxide into a beaker. Um, I was able to get around 40 grams of zinc oxide from zinc alkaline batteries, uh, but zinc hydroxide or another source of zinc oxide would work just as well. Next, I add some sodium hydroxide to a beaker. Unfortunately, because it's hydroscopic, some water got into the jar, and yeah, it was really hard to get the sodium hydroxide out. Then I set up a hot plate, added some water to a beaker. I think I ended with about three or 400 milliliters. And with strong stirring, I added my sodium hydroxide to make a concentrated solution. In total, I think I added about 70 or 80 grams of sodium hydroxide. This is because the stoichiometric quantity that you need is only about 30 grams in order to turn the zinc oxide or hydroxide into sodium zincate. However, you need excess sodium hydroxide in solution to keep your sodium zincate soluble. You'll see that here as I add in my uh, zinc oxide. This is where the trouble with this project began. After letting it sit for a couple hours, my sodium zincate solution still had not been able to dissolve all of my zinc oxide, even though my calculated amount of sodium hydroxide should have been enough. So I added some water and later more sodium hydroxide under strong stirring to a larger beaker where I transferred as much of my solution as I could. As I pour, you can see at the very bottom is a lot of undissolved zinc oxide. I tried to run this through and dissolve it again, but I ended up having to just dump a lot of it and call it waste, which is kind of unfortunate. After some strong stirring, more water added, and sodium hydroxide equaling a total of 80 grams added by now, my solution had cleared up slightly, but I still had not dissolved near as much zinc oxide as I wanted. But after leaving it overnight, the next day it had this surprising clear yellow color, so I decided to filter off my solution. After filtering through as much as I could, left at the bottom of my beaker was this goopy solution of, I, I guess, just undissolved zinc oxide and maybe a little bit of sodium zincate. I was able to dig my stir bar out, and upon closer examination, you can see little bits of metal that are attached to the magnet. I'm not entirely sure what this is, if there was some kind of other metal contamination, or you can see it better there. I don't know. I have no idea what that is. But, yeah, I thought that was interesting. I left that solution to sit overnight, and the next day I added a couple more grams of sodium hydroxide and stirred it manually with a stir rod. Then I filtered it again, and I, I did all this off camera, but it actually cleared up the solution a little bit, so it's now this clearish yellow color, which is pretty consistent with usually what you'll get from dirty sodium zincate. So there's probably some impurities, but it's fine enough. Now I'm going to be setting up my electrolysis setup. 
for my electrolysis setup, I'm able to borrow this power supply, and on the cathode end, I'm able to attach alligator clips leading to a piece of copper metal. This is just a random piece of piping I've been using for electrolysis for like a year. And then on the anode end, I'm using a piece of graphite I extracted from a big 9 volt D battery. Uh, you can probably use any kind of inert electrodes, so smaller pieces of graphite or lead dioxide, titanium oxide, or platinum, but I'm too poor and lazy to get any of those. And yeah, it's just a matter of plugging everything in and getting it set up. Once my electrodes were all plugged in and my janky setup was officially ready, I turned on the power supply and began to start my electrolysis. Now, after doing some calculations, it takes a very low voltage to drive this reaction, but everyone I saw do it on YouTube used a pretty high voltage, so I figured, you know, monkey see monkey do, I may as well turn it up, and I'll turn it down if I notice any side reactions, or sometimes what happens with high voltage and high current is your solution will get really hot and start boiling. I didn't really have that happening here. At first not much is happening, but as I begin to turn my voltage up, my current increases and you can see bubbles forming on our cathode. These bubbles are hydrogen gas made by the electrolysis of water. You can see it more clearly here, and as I adjust the voltage, I can adjust the rate at which hydrogen gas is able to evolve from our cathode. Now the reaction that should be happening here is sodium zincate splits into the sodium and zincate ions. The sodium ion is able to move towards the cathode where, since it's easier to reduce water than sodium, water reduces into hydroxide and hydrogen gas and sodium hydroxide is formed. Meanwhile, on the anode, the zincate ion is able to be oxidized into zinc metal and oxygen gas, but no matter how much voltage and amperage I apply, I could not get more than a very small amount of bubbling to occur at our anode, so I knew something was wrong. After about 20 minutes of trying to get something to happen with a copper electrode, I switched it out for the stainless steel plate that I had. Because of the reaction happening, most electrode materials should have been fine, but I was still not able to get any zinc to plate out or any meaningful amount of oxygen to produce, whether I was using that flat stainless steel plate or the piece of copper. In fact, when I used the stainless steel plate, I actually got a little bit of corrosion, and that's why you can see a little bit of suspension in our sodium zincate. It's probably some iron compounds that formed. So, I finally switched the anode for a piece of graphite, and still, very little bubbling occurred, and no zinc metal was able to form. But then, when all hope was lost, I took a look at our cathode, and what I saw was this weird gray powder clinging to it. At first, I thought some kind of reaction was messing with our graphite electrode and causing it to disintegrate, which has happened to me a couple times, although it's rare. But on closer examination, and after doing a flame test, it appeared that this was, in fact, zinc metal forming on our cathode. Now this was very curious as our reaction was showing that the zincite ion was supposed to oxidize on the anode into zinc metal. In order for it to reduce onto the cathode, that would mean there'd have to be zinc 2 plus ions in the solution, which there were not. I looked back at my voltage to see if a side reaction was occurring, but it could not have been the case. I, I was really baffled and completely confused at this point, and I left my setup to run a little longer, and I continued to form what looked like zinc metal on our cathode. I am completely at a loss here. As I leave the zinc metal out, you can actually see it very slowly start to oxidize in the air. This is kind of odd, must mean the powder is like really fine. I'm not sure, I've never had this happen before. By this point, I was sort of fed up with this lab, and I was kind of just worried that something would go wrong. So I was able to get a few nice shots of the zinc metal, it actually looks really pretty, but after scrolling through the YouTube videos that had instructed me how to do this in the first place, I found one comment that stood out. I was not able to find it, but he pretty much said, similar thing as to what just happened to me happened to him, only the zinc he produced on his cathode was pyrophoric and when he left it out to dry on a filter paper, it exploded. So, 
I very cautiously took all my waste and all my zinc powder, and I left it for a couple hours. After nothing bad happened, I just decided to burn it all into zinc oxide just in case. And, yeah. Anyways, here's some parting shots of my zinc metal. I was able to scrape it all off onto this filter paper so you could get a good look at all of it. And I was even able to get some shots of it oxidizing pretty slowly and forming just zinc oxide when exposed to the air. Overall, this lab was part of my French and absolute mindfuck. I thought I kind of knew what was going on in electrolysis, and then I 